All right, everyone, today we're going to be looking at a forum discussion for a Feast for Odin where somebody's asking, is there a first player advantage to this game? So Archduke maybe thinks so. So over the players group, the idea was floated to collect some statistics on whether going first is advantageous or not. Here are the first round of stats. So we look at these two player games. It's pretty close, actually. 176 games, the first player won. 188 games, the second player won. So that's about 50-50. We look at the three player games, that is almost rote 33.333% chance like for each player to win. If anything, according to these numbers, player one has a slight disadvantage, not an advantage. All right. Where it gets weird is with only 37 trials, really too small of a sample size to be real statistics, it's uh, saying that the first player won 35% of the time, the second player won 29% of the time, and the third player had an issue, only won 16% of the time, and then the fourth player won 18, about 19% of the time. So 13 games, 11 games, 6 games, 7 games. What was going on, third and fourth player? Well, let's look at some experts. So Keith Hendricks, who I believe he's got a very high ELO in Feast for Odin, He's saying, uh, thanks, it would be nice if there was a large set of four-player games to analyze. I'm adding a few of these games a few times a week, lol. I expect the stats of for four players may even out once there's a larger set of games. Like I said, it needs to be a lot more than 37 games. But there will probably still be a significant difference between one, two, three, and four player. This may be due to a player meta that overvalues the following. Wood, ships, and immigration, and undervalues stone houses and engines not based on wood or ships so a lot of people like getting wood and then turn it into ships and then immigrating and they are undervaluing using stone for houses and engines i've heard the uh, game is broken because somebody uses wood to make ships and then immigrate those ships i don't believe that's true um animals he's saying use animals and you could actually do pretty well Every time I've used animals, I've gotten very low scores. So I just don't know how to use animals well. It's not that animals are underpowered, according to Keith. So it would be interesting to determine these statistics for beginners, good players, strong players. Seeing how skills affect starting player order advantage would be extremely interesting. All right, so Flower says animals are just too weak in the base game, which forces everybody down a path of whaling or raiding. So, yeah, he brings up, hey. I know there's this immigration strategy with wood and ships, and it then immigrate those ships for a bunch of points. Uh, earlier is better to do that. But uh, Flower2886 is saying, hey, who cares what you're saying, Keith? I'm actually going to look at Flower's yellow. It's, hey, it's a public website. You can compare it right now. So animals are just too weak in the base game, which forces everyone down a path of whaling or raiding. It's hard to believe the fourth player would not be disadvantaged of a few victory points. Um, a Feast for Odin offers more options once you add the Norwegian expansion, such as Breeding Pigs, that is not available on Board Game Arena, unfortunately. All right, Keith Hendricks says, Animals are actually pretty decent in the base game. I play animal strategies a lot, and they work pretty well for me. They may not work for everybody all the time, but they work for me a lot of the time. Um, then he starts talking about the Norwegian expansion. All right, he says, You're right, whaling. Do not let your opponent's monopoly as a whaling action. Okay. So what I like that they're talking about animals because my thought is that if uh, player one and player two are going for the optimal strategy, with the, which they're saying is wooden ships or maybe whaling, then they're going to be competing for those action spaces. And then player three and four, if they're also competing for those action spaces, they're not going to do so well. So they need to pick something else to try to do. And if they pick something else that's an underpowered strategy, like maybe animals, or they just don't know how to use animals very well, like myself, then they're not going to do very well trying something else. But for those two strategies, the uh, immigration versus whaling, so yeah, if the player one and player two are taking up all the immigration spaces, player three and player four can be like, all right, no problem, we'll do something else like whaling or raiding, but, uh, but don't really you know, use up uh, a strategy that wouldn't work for us, such as animals. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe still get some points there and possibly beat out somebody without having to worry about competing with everyone else. 
And maybe that's what the third player is doing in the three player games, but uh, maybe uh, one and two compete with each other, and then three and four compete with each other, and three and four are then at a disadvantage. Um, that's just my thoughts. But you know what? I can't even really put a lot of uh, concreteness to that because uh, with only 37 games, who knows what really happened? That's just my hypothesis. All right, so Xu Shen says, so we should make the three player the default for the game, right? And the second thought he has is, four is just terrible because the starting player can take four wood and one ore with only two Vikings. Okay, so that's an interesting thought. He's talking about the uh, four Viking or the uh, two Viking spot space that allows you to get one wood per player and an ore. All right, so this is Keith Hendricks with 50, at 54th place in Feast for Odin, 404 ELO. And then Flower was arguing the animals are not very good. Let's see how Flower is doing with Feast for Odin. All right, Feast. Boom, okay. And Flower is pretty good, 215. I mean, better than me. All right. So we can actually watch a game in progress of a Feast for Odin if we wanted to. Here. We'll just load up a game real quick, like. See, uh, see a turn based game that somebody's playing right now. And I'll point out some of these action spaces. So, right here. No, 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 sorry. Right. Here, two Vikings, one wood per player, and the ore. Okay. Now, it turns out that, back to our forum, that Keith is saying that uh, actually the uh, that space, the two Viking mountain action, is overrated. It actually makes him breathe a sigh of relief when they go for that action space. So that's actually quite interesting. He actually goes on to say he'd rather take this space or even this space. Uh, the the four Viking or the three Viking uh, space in the mountains rather than this space, even with a four-player game. So, finally, at the end of this video, I'll show you my ELO in Feast for Odin, only 144, and then we're going to look at different games that are out there that uh, we're going to see who started the game and who actually won my last five games that I have played. And we'll close this video up. Or last couple games. Okay, so I beat Fitz for Rage, but Fitz for Rage started, so that is not a first player advantage. Okay. Now, this next one, Nico actually started, but he got fourth place. He wasn't doing so hot, he just left. Um, so there's also not a first player advantage. And here, myself. All right, there was a first player advantage there, possibly. I went first, and that game, neither of us did very well at all. <laughs> all right, so hopefully you all enjoyed that. I personally don't think there's a first player advantage. Let me know in the comments below what you think.